Hello there everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video showcasing the Simon Says Stamp, an all-to-new Stamptember exclusive. Now this stamp set is beautiful. It's a Lily stamp set and I thought it would be really fun to turn this into a Christmas card. So I drew some inspiration online by looking up some Christmas lilies and I found this really pretty, almost peppermint striped lily. And I thought that would be a fun way to color these using the new Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Pencils. So before I get into the coloring though, I am gonna show you the beautiful Lily set that's right here. And there are coordinating dies available for it. It's a beautiful stamp set with some great greetings. I'm gonna take some Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper and I'm gonna put this inside of my Misty tool. I'm going to lay the stamped image inside of the Misty along with the paper and then pick it up so that way I can start stamping with it. For the stamping, I am going to use some Distress Ink in Antique Linen, and this ink will fade back as I start to color with my watercolor pencils. So I have all three of the Distress Watercolor Pencil sets here, and I'm going to be using some colors from each of the different sets. So I wanna mix and match some stuff. I also have a sharpener that I'm gonna keep on hand throughout the coloring, so that way I can keep the pencils in a fairly fine point. I want to be able to keep them nice and sharp so that I can get into the fine details of these stamped images really well. And I'll link to this pencil sharpener down in the video description along with all of the other products that I'm using today to color with and also the stamp set from the Stamp Timber exclusive. So I'm going to start by coloring these images by taking some color and just feathering it from the tips of the petals down towards the center of the flower. I'm doing this for every single petal, so all the petals are colored exactly the same. I'm trying to create this striped effect that I found in the picture online, which I'll put a picture of in the top left corner so you can see what this looks like. This is what I'm going for, and so I want to have that nice striped petal with some of that beautiful red and white color palette coming through, and then the centers of the flowers are gonna showcase that nice rich green. So I use two different greens for that. I really liked how this came together. It created a very unique color palette and the watercolor pencils blended out really well on this distressed watercolor paper. I've played around with the distressed watercolor pencils and I have found that this paper is my absolute favorite to work with them on. I really enjoy how they blend out on this type of paper. And for all of the coloring as I'm blending things out because this is a small image, I do want to make sure I'm using a small brush. So I'm using a number two. You could even go a bit smaller and use maybe like a one or a zero. You can of course use these pencils dry as I am here and then add water or you could put water down and add pencil afterwards. I've done that here. I have these petals that are still a little bit wet and I'm bringing in some of that color to create some extra texture and a bit more shading. And by putting the pencil down on that slightly damp surface, we're gonna get a little bit of a different look than if we put it down on a dry surface and blend it out. You're gonna get more of those pencil lines to show up, which is what I wanted. So I don't have the coordinating dies for this, but I am using my Simon Says Stamp Fine Tip Scissors to cut this out. But of course there are coordinating dies available, so if you wanna get the dies, you can. Over top of all of my coloring, I'm putting a little bit of glossy accents here and there. I'm not covering the entire flower, just little areas of it. And that's because I wanna put some mica flakes on top of those glue areas, just so that way I'll get some nice sparkle on certain areas of the flowers. It creates a nice shimmer. I'm gonna set that aside and let it dry, and meanwhile take some Resist Spray and some Canson XL paper, and I'm going to spritz this. Once it dries, I'm gonna start ink smushing on top of it. Now, I've shown this many times in the past. I really like to do ink smushing by taking some ink and putting it onto a piece of plastic, something like a stamp storage pocket, and then use that to transfer the ink onto my cardstock. It allows me to see where I'm putting the ink. I don't like the surprise of finding out what happens when I put it down on my work surface and put the paper on top and not really happy with how it came out. I like having a tad more control by doing something like this. So I'm smushing a few different colors of Distress Ink, Ice Spruce, Speckled Egg, and believe it or not, Walnut Stain onto this background. And you'll notice it has a very speckled look because we used the Resist Spray first. So the Resist Spray is a really great medium for allowing you to get basically whatever color is underneath to stay untouched as you add more colors on top. So I spritzed that paper 
very randomly. It was more just of a splatter effect. And that gave me that nice white splatter because we had white paper underneath all this ink. So after that background dried, I have it turned upside down and I'm putting red line tape along the back side of it. This red line tape is going on all four edges. I'm gonna remove the release paper from three sides only and then lay this entire sheet still face down onto a piece of plastic. This is some extra stamp packaging that one of my stamp sets came in and I cut it down to be just slightly larger than the size of this card panel. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping the edges of that plastic into the adhesive that are on those three sides and that's creating a pocket with one side still open so that I can fill it with some sequins and glitter. So I'm creating an edge to edge shaker card and I've made also many of these too in the past and I love making them, I never get tired of this. I filled mine with some clear sequins and mica flakes just for a snowy effect. I didn't want this to be very busy because the background is already busy. So I wanted this to just be something subtle with a little bit of shimmer. So I'll remove the release paper from that last edge and then fold that plastic on top of the adhesive to close the sequins and glitter inside. This background is now going to be the perfect backdrop for my flowers, but I wanna add a little bit more frosty element to it. So I'm gonna attach a stencil. This is the Simon Says Stamp Berries and Leaves stencil. I attached it to my shaker card. So this is sitting on top of that plastic that we just made a pocket with for our background. I'm putting some texture paste, white texture paste from Tim Holtz through that stencil on top of the plastic so that I can transfer that beautiful berry and leaves design onto my edge to edge shaker window. Isn't this pretty? So this is wet paste and this will take some time to dry. While it's still wet, I'm gonna cover it with some glitter. So this is clear rock candy distress glitter and that's gonna be the perfect snowy frame for my flowers. You can see it sparkling here. It's gonna look so pretty. I'm gonna put my flowers on top of that snowy frame using some foam tape. These are Simon Says Stamp foam squares and that's just gonna give a little bit of lift and dimension off of this background and it's gonna give some separation. So everything's gonna have some space to have its own area on this card. So those flowers create a nice corner cluster here and we're just needing a sentiment at this point. So I'm going to take this Mary Script die from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Design it's an older die set, but it's an oldie but goodie. I use this die a lot. I've die cut it from white cardstock and also some Simon Says Stamp silver matte cardstock. These are perfect for creating a nice stack of sentiments on top of the shadow layer. So I have those white layers underneath the silver and that creates a really nice stacked sentiment that I can put on my card. And I just use some Simon Says Stamp micro dot sheets to attach all those pieces together. So I'm wrapping things up by taking some sentiment strips from the From All of Us Christmas set from Simon Says Stamp. I have this one here that said, we wish you a Merry Christmas. I just cut out the word Merry because I already have Merry from the die cut and just pieced the sentiment back together and put that onto the left side of my card. So I had thought I was done at that point, but I did decide to bring in a little bit more of that walnut stain into the front of the card. So I pulled out some liquid pearls and used that to create some nice centers on the lilies. That was the perfect tie-in for that walnut stain color because that walnut stain really added the warmth that this card needed to go with the red tones for the lilies. And I really liked how all these colors ended up pairing up together. So that is the card I created with the all to new stamp timber exclusive with Simon Says Stamp only available at Simon Says Stamp, and it's only available while supplies last. So if you are watching this video and you really like that set, I definitely would encourage you to grab it while you can. I think this stamp set is perfect for all times of years. Whether it's every day, Christmas, Easter, you name it, you can use this set for a wide variety of occasions. I think that's what makes it so cool is it's so versatile. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you were inspired. Definitely check out the links in the video description or if you're watching this on my blog, be sure to check out all the links that I have shared there. Oscar, of course, is chiming in here. He thanks you also for watching. He's my constant companion and always seems to make an appearance throughout my videos. So I'm sure you'll be seeing him very soon too. Until then, friends, I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you again soon.